should be done about our crumbling roads and bridges? Should we increase the gas tax? Should we use general funds? Should we bond? Or is there another solution to keep the roads in the condition so that the economy can continue to grow? We've got enough money to fix our roads and bridges if we spend it on fixing our roads and bridges. And Smokey, you've seen the rates on the Highway Trust Fund here at the state level where we're buying carpet for state office buildings. At the federal level, you remember a couple of years ago the I-35 bridge in Minneapolis had collapsed and, and several people died. It was a tragedy. They're using Highway Trust Fund money in Minnesota to build the Twins a new baseball stadium. I think their priorities are a little bit out of whack and, and I think we need to start prioritizing the money we're spending right now. Let me tell you a dirty little secret about earmarking. This is just between us. The money that's coming to New Hampshire that Paul Hodes or Carol Shea Porter want to earmark for highways is already coming to New Hampshire. It's coming out of the other projects that we need to spend. And, and when people argue about earmarking, well, we know our state's best, so we know how to spend it. Yeah, well, is the congressman really going to prioritize Route 10 or Route 16 between Berlin and Errol? I've driven on that a couple of times this month, and it needs some help. Or are they going to prioritize Route 101? over in Amherst or Milford, where there are more voters. I think we need to end the process of earmarking and end the backlog of constructions on our red list bridges, on our highways, and our water infrastructure project. Because we saw in New Orleans during Hurricane Katrina what happens when we trust politicians to set priorities for public infrastructure. They can't be trusted, and you, lose, you end up more than a bumpy ride. We end up losing lives. What is your economic policy concerning the Federal Reserve <coughs> System and the declining value of the dollar? Remember that 80% I talked about? This part of the 20. I have to tell you, you guys are flat out wrong. Inflation isn't caused by the energy market. It isn't caused by overtaxation. The value of the dollar has dropped because we've printed too many dollars. There are other problems in our economy that, that you're right on about, about taxes and about energy. But inflation is always and everywhere a monetary phenomenon, as Milton Friedman once said. The Federal Reserve has attacked the U.S. dollar. They've tried to inflate our way out of debt. And we need to stop it. We need people in Congress who understand that, that the Federal Reserve's only legitimate role is as a lender of last resort. In case we have bank panics, it was the Federal Reserve Act of, I think, 1913 that created the Federal Reserve System to serve as a backstop to create runs on banks. In that role, it's legitimate, but as the arbiter of interest rates for the entire nation trying to regulate an economy of 300 million people, they're very bad at it. It's not a question of making the right decision or the wrong decision. They're the wrong people to be making the decisions. They have inflated our dollar. They've been wrong to do it. They shouldn't have the power to do it, and we need a Congress that's going to take that power back and let the dollar go back to its naturally strong level. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Peter. I, I agree with Grant. And, and, I, and I agree wholeheartedly, so let's uh, turn our attention now to immigration. The latest estimates are there are over 12 million illegal immigrants in this country. And several proposals have obviously been in front of Congress over the past four years regarding this issue, ranging from building border fence to granting some form of amnesty. And wondering what your plan is. and then they neglected to fund it, and Paul Hodes has voted against funding it. He took a taxpayer-funded trip to San Diego at the beginning of the year, and he took a look at the border fence along the San Diego-Tijuana border. The fence I saw last year, I wasn't there on taxpayer dollars, I was out there to see the Red Sox. And uh, he saw the fence that's working, that's reducing violent crime and drug use in downtown San Diego. He came back and he said, the fence is working, let's build a virtual fence. Traffic lights and motion detectors. The Department of Homeland Security says that their pilot project for just a few miles of fence is going to be delayed three years because it's not working. The virtual fence is virtually useless. I want an actual fence. We can keep both of us happy. You can virtually vote for Paul Hodes and then actually vote for me. <laughs> the fence is a first step. We have to enforce our immigration laws on employers who are hiring people under the table. We have to reform our visa system so that people can come here legally instead of illegally, the vast majority of those 12 million Amer uh, people here illegally, that's the only law they've broken because they want to build a better life. We need to separate those people, bring them out of the shadows, give them a chance to return home and get into the back of the line so that the ones that are hiding here and are committing other crimes and are taking advantage of our welfare system and are here unscrupulously that don't just want a better life for themselves, we can send those home for good. Not virtually. 
Really? <laughs> All right. Bob. <laughs> Thank you, Peter. Jim. Congressman Hose has been in office for a long enough time to have established a record. What is the most irresponsible thing he's done for the citizens of New Hampshire while he's been there? All right. All right, Grant. I'm going to take about a minute to review his record and come up with the worst, single worst vote. It's pretty bad. There's just so many choices. I mean, farm policy, the, the largest budget in history. You know, I'm going to go with, and he's been wrong on so many issues, I'm going to go with perpetuating what I think is the single worst policy of the federal government, and that's our farm policy. Because it affects so much more of uh, what we've done as a nation. We have a $300 billion farm bill that simply adds to the subsidies for a couple of products in the big square states in the middle. We are planting so much corn now for the ethanol subsidy that farmers don't have room for other crops. They're using marginal land, hurting the environment for corn, which is an incredibly inefficient product, so that they can burn it for fuel for ethanol. I think that is the single most destructive policy we have on the books. Not only does it drive up the cost of gas, lower your fuel efficiency, and eat through pipelines, so you have to put it in trucks, so you're shipping ethanol but burning diesel, but it also <laughs> drives up the price of food. You, don't have, you can't plant wheat, so it drives up the price of bread. You can't plant feed for your cattle, so it drives up the cost of milk and meat. I mean, it makes beer more expensive. This is unacceptable. <laughs> hey, that's where we draw the line right there, the beer line. All right. <laughs> Bob, what do you think about beer? Uh, or, or Paul Hose's worst decision, either one. I I'm for beer. All right. Go uh, for explain your policy concerning totalization of Social Security with regard to Mexico. <laughs> Thank you, and, and uh, this is an issue I dealt very closely with, working with Senator Sununu as the, the staffer for Social Security. Quite simply, if you're here legally and you're paying the taxes and your employer is paying the taxes, you've earned the benefit. If you're here illegally, thanks for your money, please go home. The broader question of Social Security um, requires a bold plan within the next nine years, because that's when Social Security starts paying out more than it pays back in. And again, I worked with John Sununu on the Ryan Sununu Social Security Savings Act. I helped him write the bill. His name was on the door, so he gets all the credit. But we need a plan that saves Social Security for people making uh, at or near retirement, that lets younger workers keep a portion of their retirement, and that would instantly solve the totalization problem because people would either be putting their own money aside or they wouldn't. They wouldn't be earning a promise on the federal government. If you fix Social Security, all the other issues go away. I'm going to be a leader on that issue, and I'm going to make Paul Hodes defend his plan, which is to do nothing and let Social Security go bankrupt starting in nine years. I will hold him accountable for that. We need a Congress that is going to protect taxpayers, protect gun owners, protect life. That's my message. I hope you make it our message on September 9th in the Republican primary. My name is Grant Bossy. I believe in free speech, free markets, and free people. I'm asking for your support. With your help, we can take back Congress and take back the Republican Party. Well, thank you very much. You know, ladies and gentlemen, I...